Martins, who's also now mayor of Englewood, New Jersey. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks very much. Thank uh, you. Michael, the fact that, that they have spent more time deliberating, deliberating the punishment um, more than the actual sentence itself, you know, the guilty or, in it, or uh, not guilty verdict, leads one to believe that they're having trouble coming up with a unanimous verdict here. I think so also, John, and I think it's very sad. Effectively and potentially, there'll be two sets of parents left without children and a grandchild. Justice needs to be meted out dispassionately, and the question is, if you're sitting in a room and you never had a video of Scott Peterson murdering his wife and daughter, it may be one thing to convict somebody, it may be another thing to actually call for that person's death. And who's to say that a, a life in jail for 60-something years isn't but a death itself? David, is, uh, the longer this goes, uh, does it look better for Peterson and his team? Well, I think there's no question about that, John, no doubt about it. You know, I was standing out in front of that courthouse 3.30 p.m. on Friday just hoping, along with the throngs of media, that they'd make a decision. But my guess here is that one of two things have happened. Either at 3.30 they reached a conclusion and decided to impose or recommend death on Scott, or they simply came to a loggerheads, couldn't figure out what was going on, simply had to take more time to take a deep breath, come together and see if they can meet. It's probably 9-3, 10-2, 11-1 one in favor of death. That's probably the more likely scenario, well, John, and I expect they're going to get back to work very hard this morning. What happens under California law, though, if, if they come up with sort of a hung jury when it comes to the recommendation? He gets life automatically? Is that it? No. If it's hung, the prosecutor can ask for a retrial and panel a new jury of the penalty phase. However, will they do that? This case involved enormous costs to the taxpayers, enormous human costs, financial costs. Knowing these prosecutors, knowing the length of this case, I doubt it would happen, although those, there are those that say Sharon Rocha wants death in this case. And if the jury is hung, she will demand a new jury to recommend death eventually, hopefully, for her family in memory of Lacey and Connor. Well, John. Michael, you've been a prosecutor. I mean, if, if the prosecution doesn't get exactly what they got, they got, they, they got their conviction, they wanted that badly, if they don't get exactly the penalty they want, would they be likely to go you know, through the trouble of getting another jury? The prosecution is not only the advocate for the victims who can't speak for themselves, but has to be the protectorate of the system, so to say. There is a potential appeal here and I think the prosecution is keeping an eye on bouncing two balls, if you would. One, the, the ultimate sentence and potential demise of the defendant. And secondly, that this appeal will be integral, that there won't be any challenge that would send them back to courts. And also, David, if I mind you, the, this appeal could be extraordinarily expensive as well. While the person is actually in jail, the amount that it's going to cost the taxpayers of the state of California is exorbitant. The well, remember one, this, though. Pardon? Remember this. In the death penalty case, if he gets the death penalty, there is an automatic appeal to the Supreme Court of California at taxpayers' expense. If he gets life without parole, he can waive appeal. There doesn't have to be one, and that would be the end of it. All so, right. Said for both families, um, I think we're going to have a decision today. David Wool and Michael Wilds. Gentlemen, well, uh, thank you. Thanks for being with us. You bet, John. Using the Amber Alert system to find a missing car. It has happened, and false calls like that are putting the system in jeopardy. But is there a way to stop false alerts? One lawmaker has an idea. And terrorists using laser beams to try to blind pilots and bring down U.S. airplanes? Could it really happen? We'll ask a former director of the National Transportation Safety Board.